Let's talk about another writer in the field of uh, spy fiction, uh, John Buchan. John Buchan uh, was a British politician and uh, administrator who, I believe, died Governor General of Canada, um, very well liked over there. That would be in the, I think, the 50s or the early 60s. He was a rough contemporary of Winston Churchill, and he sort of represented in his, in his life and his fiction that era of sort of, you know, the Edwardian empire, British empire manager and, um, and thinker. Uh, and uh, he, he seems like one of those people who lived a very interesting life, and if you dug into more of his uh, history, uh, you would find out some pretty neat connections and some pretty neat things. But for our purposes, um, he is a thriller writer, uh, primarily for uh, primarily for uh, a few books he wrote about a character named Richard Hane. And Hane, uh, as a character and the books in general, really helped set a tone um, for a certain kind of of thriller and uh, and secret agent story um, that we still uh, use uh, to this day. Buchan was a very good writer um, for this kind of uh, work. He was he was very direct. He was melodramatic, and um, he you know. Uh, was, uh, he knew how to. He knew how to kind of. He knew how to set the clock running. So uh, the best known, um, partly because of the movie adaptation, is uh, the Thirty Nine Steps. There were three major Hene books. I think there was actually a fourth, but there were three major ones uh, that were written mostly during the nineteen tens. Uh, the first is the Thirty Nine Steps. The second was called Green Mantle, and the third was called Mister Standfast. I had a collection of these books given to me when I was young, which is, you know, kind of unusual for a kid who was born in 1980. But I read them multiple times, and I liked them, uh, especially 39 Steps. And the elements of it went on to, you know, lay the groundwork for a certain kind of, of uh, literature that, you know, carried on to this day, like I said earlier. So um, it's about 19... 14, um, and we're in kind of the, the regular world, and the main character is a guy named Richard Hane. He's about 40. He's experienced. He's tough. He's disciplined. Um, he doesn't, you know, he's, he's independent. He doesn't like to rely on anyone except himself, and he's, you know, reasonably well off, and he's living in London, and he's really bored. Um, he had lived a life in the active life in the colonies of sort of, you know, doing things and making things, and now he's back in civilization and he's finding it all pretty, pretty rough. But fortunately, what comes along but a, uh, a massive, uh, sort of, uh, seek and find mission, um, where a man mysteriously dies, uh, and Hane is, uh, wanted for the murder when in fact this guy is imparted to Hene a secret that Hene has to pursue. He has to both clear his name and um, discover the origin of the real dark forces that killed this man and that threatened Britain and so on. Um, so it's very good. Uh, it has the uh, it has certain key elements of this kind of fiction. One is you isolate the main character. He gets occasional help from strangers along the way but most of the book, he can't rely on anyone but himself. He can't go to the authorities. You come up with some reason why, you know, he can't do that. One of the best, which, of course, Alfred Hitchcock, who made the uh, film adaptation of this book in 1935, used all the time, is that he's actually wanted for a crime himself, and so he can't go to the authorities because they would just arrest him, and while it took, to, you know, maybe everyone thing would work out, but most likely it would all collapse. Um, the other thing is, you set a... You set a clock running. You've got to have a clock going on in the uh, background of the story. You know, if we don't blank by such and such a date, 
um, something awful will happen. If we don't do this, then the bomb will go off. If we don't catch them by this, they'll kill the prime minister or whatever. Um, so, you know, Hane is dealing with this. He has something like a week uh, <laughs> to, like, sort all of this out. And uh, you push your hero through on a combination of sort of their skill, their ability to um, manipulate social situations, um, improvisation, a little bit of luck is all right as long as you don't stretch it too far, and um, their, you know, just their innate capacity. So, you know, you give people these situations that look impossible to escape, and then you, you know, let the guy wriggle out of it. Um, the, you know, Hitchcock used this all the time in, in his thrillers. It was uh, a big part of his uh, appeal was to create sort of outlaw tales set in the contemporary world where you were free to sympathize with the outlaw because you knew what the decent people in the movie didn't know, which is that they're actually innocent and there's a purpose to everything they do. Um, so, you know, you can see this element of the isolated individual who's acting on behalf of the greater good in the law, but doesn't look like they're acting on behalf of the greater good in the law. Uh, you can see that element trickling through almost all of uh, the sensational um, fictions that we consume. I'm using sensational in the old sense, the kind that appeal to sensation. It's not that sensational like, oh, it's so good. It's more just like this is about, it's about getting your the hairs on the back of your neck up and making you go, oh, I hope they get away with it, and oh, ah, uh, bah, that kind of fiction. Um, so Buchan wrote, wrote that pretty well. Um, the other thing that he did pretty well was uh, right around this time there was starting to be a kind of sensational literature that was set in um, the contemporary world's real political world. Um, so in Buchan's case, uh, this is the sort of great power conflict between uh, the United Kingdom and a, a rising uh, unified Germany. You know, Germany wasn't unified as a country until I believe, like formally and finally, until 18. 70 thereabouts, and then they defeated France in the Franco-Prussian War, um, winning control of two important uh, French provinces, Alsace and Lorraine, and sort of establishing themselves as uh, the nation on, on the go. Their economy was doing really well. They had a large uh, scientific and engineering community. They were doing all these internal improvements. They, they built up Berlin as like a big new modern city. And they had a very um, jingoistic emperor, Kaiser Wilhelm II. And he eventually, you know, announced that the Germany would sort of be seeking um, an empire, much as uh, France and, uh, and England, and as well as, you know, Holland and Portugal and a couple other places, had already had uh, an overseas empire. And that to do this, they were going to build a navy. This cost... Uh, caused a lot of um, fear and acrimony in, uh, in Britain, and Kaiser Wilhelm was already sort of a figure of, of comedy, but also of sort of like fear and uh, um, paranoia in uh, this pre-World War, pre War I era. There's even a Sherlock Holmes story that centers around a message that's pretty clearly a, a nasty letter that the Kaiser wrote insulting Britain and the idea is if the letter was leaked it could lead to war because it would so offend the sensibilities of the British people that uh, you know war would, would be the only option. Uh, so Buchan entered this world and his uh, Hene thrillers are the are centered in this real um, moment right before the Russian Revolution, um, which would take center stage in sort of the next um, phase of, of uh, thrillers and, and sensational literature uh, 
in the in the twenties. So uh, these stories are very good. I, I want to stress that they have parts that have uh, have dated badly um, for for like sort of uh, contemporary sensibilities. You know, where uh, they're very they're full of that um, ethnic stereotyping that was just everywhere in the English speaking world before. Uh, let's say roughly World War Two, but especially around this era of uh, pre World War One, when the um, when the British Empire was, you know, the biggest in the world and very confident, and they won all the time, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, there was a lot of feeling of freedom to define other people by their ethnicities, um, and so there's a fair amount of that. Um, there's no deep role for female characters or and it's it's basically a, a struggle between um, you know different white people uh, the uh, what makes them good is that uh, Buckin's a, a good writer who knows how to uh, build and release tension um, throughout an entire book which is essentially you know kind of what you ask of a of a thriller is that it, it build up tension quickly that it um, you know, sort of ratchet it up from scene to scene a little bit as the um, the larger plot unfolds and as the main character discovers more and more um, what sort of the full um, plans of the antagonist are, and uh, you know finally like overcomes them usually in some means you know that's not fully telegraphed by the plot. There have to be you know little bits of surprise along the way. So, um, in the Thirty Nine Steps, for example, which is which is probably the best one, simply because um, it's the the shortest, <laughs> uh, which is can be a real strength for a thriller. When I think of some of the great um, sort of tension driven stories, uh, in, in tension driven novels, uh, a lot of them are reasonably short. The Maltese Falcon, for example, not very long. So we explore sort of one question. And we learn a little more about the antagonist that Hene is pursuing. He overcomes different obstacles. He stays undetected. He finally um, gets permission from the authorities to sort of go and secretly confront uh, the villains, and uh, and he wins. Uh, it's not, you know, there's, there's there's no big surprise about that. These are melodramas, um, but what they gave, especially Thirty Nine Steps, which takes place before the war in you know primary in England um, what they gave to the adventure idiom dun, 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 was um, a sense of the the fact the idea that sort of a lawless frontier could be anywhere in the modern world you know adventure tales tend to take place in a world where the normal rules of society in some way or other are a little you know suspended they're in the ancient past when ethics were different they're in another land sometimes literally another world they're in another place where it's understood that like the the laws and customs are different and what the spy figure allows even more than the detective figure um, because the spy figure you know a spy is ultimately uh, a soldier Whereas a detective is a you know a, a, a law enforcement agent, but uh, the spy is more of a soldier, and so the spy has more freedom to um, act as a soldier just in the world that we know. Um, so if you think of say a popular spy like you know James Bond or Jason Bourne, his privilege as a soldier in the fight allows him to behave in the normal waking contemporary world um, basically as a as a, a person who in, a, in, in another context we would call a criminal they get to transgress boundaries they get to like you know speed through red lights and car chases and stuff um, and we get to enjoy that vicariously um, by our identification with them but they have this overpowering justification and it's understood that whatever they do in the pursuit of the greater good it's going to be um, okay with society at large once uh, the full story is uh, exposed. 
Although it would be extremely funny if at the end of, say, a Jason Bourne or a James Bond movie or something, someone sat him down and said, okay, let's go through the damage report. This is what you did, and our insurance can't cover this, James. What? Are you crazy? That would be a laugh and a half. So the Hene Tales have some of the same freedom. Since Hene is a secret agent acting on behalf of the government, it's understood that the things that he does, the lies and the... Uh, the deceptions are all kind of okay that a person of normal everyday morality can you know enjoy them uh, safely um, so yeah three pretty good uh, thrillers 39 steps in particular that helped lay uh, some of the groundwork um, for the uh, uh, between the wars and Cold War thrillers uh, that were to come.